you know, it's almost impossible to do all these things at the same time. I must be some kind of superhero because I always want to save everybody I love. You know, like Batman. But I'm not Batman, I'm that man. <laughs> and I have a that mobile, I got a that cage, and I'm also that. The legendary Dame Dash got his start over 25 years ago with Rockefeller Records. Of course, you know that he had Rockefeller Records, he had Rockaware, he's had Dame Dash Studios, a variety of different things. Today, we sit down with him, he talks about assets over liabilities, everything he has going on currently, and much, much more. This is Earn Your Leisure or Revolt. See, I'm always trying to find the path to the least amount of work and the most amount of money. You understand? That's my thing. I, I don't want to be all, all over busting my chops for short bread. You feel me? I like to know where the margin is the best, and then I can control everything. Usually where the margin is the best is where you don't have to ask. Because there's no middlemen. When there's three, four, five middlemen and everybody got to eat, there's too many people you got to ask. I was like, when did I really? I remember like thinking like, <laughs> don't look dope no more. Like I, I, I started staying in the house. Oh, fuck. Oh, got whacked. <laughs> Chalk it up to that. Uh, everything's back. Nah, nah, but it must have been my sight. You know what I mean? Because I remember like actually having this epiphany like, my don't look as crispy as it used to look to me. And I just thought because I did everything so much that it was dull. But it was my vision. Just in life, shit was dull, period. I, that's why I was like, I might just uh, really. do some new shit. We ready? Yeah, I wanted something to break my sh my vis my. I'm ready. My brother, my brother, welcome back, brother. Poppy. It's been a couple years since the last time we was on camera together. Yeah. Historical moment. Yeah. I, I remember after that interview, you guys just. Talked, <laughs> you know, that then, was the catalyst. Then we didn't speak anymore. <laughs> I call you up. Next thing he was on revolt. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of things unchanged. Uh, <laughs> a lot of things happen, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Dane, always a pleasure, man. First and foremost, I appreciate the mentorship throughout the years, man. You've given us a lot of good advice yeah. that we've actually used in real time. Yeah, you guys are about helping people. You know, some people try to make money off anything, but you guys are actually making money off trying to evolve the culture. And that's always what I wanted, you know, for people to think that being smart was cool. So y'all at the forefront of that. But actually, y'all got plans, y'all do it. But yes, there's evolution. And it, you know, I remember when I was first uh, meeting y'all, I was wondering where y'all would be in a couple of years. So look, look where we're at. That's great. I appreciate right it, brother. <laughs> 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 so let's, let's, get in, let's get into this, man. 20, 2022, I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about the whole thing. But 2022, football, football league. I remember you called me. You told me to play. You said that there was a stadium involved, and you kind of gave me the whole rundown before you announced it publicly. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, it's a real estate play. As all right. Well. So what's the play? Break that down. Well, number one, it's a lot of different plays. Number one, it's a narrative play. There's no black owners in the NFL, mm -hmm. and I don't like the way we are treated culturally. You know, it's like systemic racism to me. You know, when like. You know, everybody that's playing has to get paid by somebody white and has, there's no other choices, then it makes you think you're number two, just like religion. Or at least that's the way we're try, they try to control us. And, um, you know, I just feel like if we, I don't want to just be in the, in the league. I want to show the world what it looks like when our culture runs something, when we're actually the landlords. So those are the rules they make. That's the way they do it. I want to do it different. I want us to own it. And I want to showcase, because everyone's scared of what it looks like culturally when we own something. They're all scared of that. Like, that's what racism is built on, fear. But do they really know what it looks like when we own something? It looks fly, you know? And it's not like we're going to be so scared that we're going to oppress another culture. We're so confident that we try to help everybody. So I believe that if we start a football league that's run by us, for the human beings, it'll be better. Because as I look at it, the players are the ones that get the short end pause of the stick every time. They always seem traumatized. Only 1% seem healthy after, mm -hmm. mentally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I believe the players and the way people should look at the wealth of their team 
is by the wealth of their team, not the owner. So my thing is to make all the players literate and make sure they have a life when they're not playing football so they're not dependent on it. And also to be able to recognize that trauma, you know, of, of, of thinking that the only way you can break a social class is by maybe breaking your leg. And what happens if you do? What do you fall back on? You know? Yeah. And it's not going to just be football. It's going to be all sports. But, I, you know, he was asking me, is it just a team? I'm like, come on, you know me better than that. No, no, he asked it. Oh, yeah, he asked that. But, yeah, both know me better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's, I have to actually run the cash register before I stand up for it, and then I can get other people to do it. So there's a lot of people that are waiting to be in this league, but I have to show that it's sustainable. You know what I mean? But yeah. I have enough wealth. I know enough people that are wealthy, including y'all. So I know if it works, and I'm like, yo, we can make a quick five, 10 million, I just did it. And I'm like, y'all want a team? You're not gonna say no unless you're scared, but you can't wear a soccer uniform unless you want a soccer team, right? <laughs> right. So when I'm, wearing, when I'm wearing all of these, like first off, I make my clothes, we were speaking about that, but it's the mentality, if you're gonna wear something on your chest, make it the mentality, just like you got it. So I've been practicing having teams with my brands for a while. So you know my merch is gonna be stupid. I already know I'm gonna have the flyest league in the planet, and I'll battle anybody on that one. I ain't worried about that. And we're gonna have the most fun, and people will be the richest. Yeah. So you, what, what's the pro the breakdown? It, how many teams are gonna be in this league? And if somebody wants to become an owner in it, what's well, the process? Because like in, even the first, in the NFL, people gotta you gotta vote to have owners in. Obviously, you're gonna change these things, but what's what's the vision? Well, we don't know exactly where it's going to end up. It's the first time. But mm -hmm. initially, we're starting with like five teams. Mm -hmm. And it's really like a different kind of thing because I look at the stadium. It's open, you know, for 12 hours. I'm not just going to have a game in there. Right. You know, I'm going to use it to do other things. I'm going to have that spot click it. You know, the play is to go into a town and just renaissance it and just build out whatever it needs. You know, to stimulate an economy of a town I means you have to bring people. But again... I want to bring everybody back to certain towns. I just want us to be the landlords. Hmm. And I can bring entertainment, entrepreneurship. I can bring healing. I can bring so many different things. Like, I really know how the world would run. If I was running it, there would be no war. Because why would there be? Everybody would be rich and healthy. You know, and what would we be fighting over? I, you know, I'd probably make women run everything so nobody would fight. You know what I mean? Hmm. No egos would run a country ever. And um, so the way to do that is maybe go town by town. You know, so I know if I go into towns that need to be renaissance and I bring it for real, for real, and I have a mean crew and everything that I do in the real world, I also do in the metaverse. So I also have, you know, the IO for MFL, Metaverse Football League. But actually, I'm, 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 I put up something today launching my gallery in the metaverse. Talk, you know, talk about that. You showed me your, uh, your rendering of yourself. Yeah, in 4D. 4D. Yeah, I don't know when we're going to be able to actually implement that in there because, you know, it's, a, it's, it's like it's like fashion. There's so many different things that have to work and have to work together. But, you know, we, 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 we're we launching the gallery and then uh, Network is like the land where we're building it on. It's like to me, the YouTube for the metaverse. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually having a little bit of issues of where the the, the NFTs are going because, like... I thought it was a lot of create, a lot of freedom for a creative, but it, it's a lot of creative. It's a lot of freedom for a creative that almost has a PhD. Like you have to have the attention span to really understand it and do the things. So there's creative there, but the language sometimes is so unapproachable that it could turn the creative off. So you listen to those calls and you're like, if I don't have a PhD or if I can't say something smart, I'm not saying nothing. What, what creative wants to do that? So when they start putting things in language that turns me culturally off as a culture, you know, I'm like, I don't like it. And, I, you know, I'm a smart guy. I'm like, why are they doing this? And then I don't know if that monkey thing is like, because what's the biggest the NFT? Eight, the eight. eight. Boy, boy, don't boy, don't boy, you boy, think boy. that's a little condescending to our we culture just, we in just a little talk, bit? We were just talking about that. I, I, I feel like, is, is that a way a nerd is trying to get cute and laugh at us? We was just talking about that. Because either way, you should tread lightly with monkey when, as it relates to our culture because it's a trigger for us. Mm -hmm. And they keep doing it. So first I wasn't like, and then I was like, why is everything a gorilla or an ape or a monkey? Why it ain't a penguin or like a panda bear or something? Why is it something that's been used to you know, disrespect us for years? So I don't know, you know? Yeah. And when 
language is difficult for a creative. That leaves a, a lot of room for exploitation. You know, so that means a lot of people that can understand may take advantage of those creators that don't want to understand. So my goal is to make it simple and make it where the creators, because, you know, only a couple of percent of artists make money on NFT. The trading makes money. Mm -hmm. So, and I could be wrong, but to me, like the NFT is just making currency to me and trading it is where the bread is at. And every now and again, an artist will catch a lick, but I want something that's, you know, creatively stimulating. I want to push boundaries. It's digital. And I'm going at it as a creative, not an administrative. Like I'm going in it as Billy, Billy Pablo III, a, a, a rock artist. And we're going to do a lot of just creative things. Like I want to push boundaries. It's never about money to me. It's always about being creative and respecting the art. But I don't see the art in, you know, like triggering us and something that's not even, more, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm going to do a little more research. So you, you spoke about the MFL, right? And that's already... The line I got with, the I.O. for that's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're always forward thinking. And so. And the next is the multiverse. The multiverse. So, so I, if you ask anybody about that knows NFTs, ask yeah. about the, the metaverse. Nine times out of ten, they got to get all reacclimated to speak that word karate that, you know, that, that intimidates you not doing a thing. It's, so, it's a lot of room for rhetoric in there. That's the, so it brings me to my point of this is a new space for a lot of people. For everybody. So, for everybody. And so I'm thinking, is there somebody that's mentoring you? Or are you learning this on the fly as you go? Or are you building a team around oh, you? Oh, I got, to a, I got a sick crew. Okay. So there's this uh, woman, Rita Lee, and uh, she was ahead of the game. She first, like, remember I, the Lupe Fiasco did a uh, a, a show at, at, at DD, at my spot, at Dame Dash Studios. And it was a 360 sort of a thing that came with an NFT. And Rita had put that together. So when it first happened, I had I was I had like four or five different people that I was talking to to see who was telling me the the right thing and the way to do it. Remember, I approached it. I'm the first. The reason why I thought this war happened and I was all right with doing it as far as selling uh, the Rockefeller Inc. was I wanted the world to know from our world what we were fighting over mm -hmm. because then they would know about the NFTs and then everyone started talking about it. But, you know, as I'm moving through this journey, people are editing, like, you're full of shit. you're full of shit. you're full of shit. And it started with a circle of six, five or six, and now I'm at, like, one and her team and, a, and another team, you know. It's about who comes to market and who can show me what they did already. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not talking about I don't understand. I got to see it. You know, language is important and translation is important. So regardless of what, Sometimes I don't understand something and I'm talking to people and they get mad at me. And I'd be like, sometimes if someone doesn't understand you and it behooves you for them to understand you, you have to speak their language as opposed to trying to make them understand yours. You understand? Because yeah. everyone comes from a different experience. And even in this NFT world, I'm hearing so many different abbreviations and different lingos and shit. So when I'm in the fashion world, something means one thing. When I'm in the music world, something means another thing. When I'm in the movie world, something means a whole nother thing. So in each industry, and we were discussing this, it has to be respected as an art. It's about the details. And if you're in there to be like the, the, the spokesperson of it, that ain't an art to me. That's an exploitation. You're making money off it. That's smart if all you're about is making bread. But as you see, we can create currency daily. So I'm about process. You know, I'm inspired by the process. Hmm. You know, I'm not going to tell somebody or pay somebody to do something that I have not already done. That's just my art. I got to make my own clothes. I got to make my own movies. I got to make my own television network. You know, I even make, me and my girl, we make our own children's books for my, you know, it's, it's just the art. We like having a point of view. Hmm. It's not about fitting in, it's about showcasing why people should follow because you're doing something they've never seen before confidently. But you got to respect the art. And if you respect the art, then you always respect the artist. So that's why I've always put the artist before the business. And that's why artists always with me, but business hates me. Mm. Because I'm not letting you rob the artist. Even if I'm supposed to be business, because I respect the art, you ain't robbing nobody on my watch. You don't know the beefs I even had internally back in the day. Like, I'm not letting that happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, artists don't even care about, you know, getting exploited sometimes. They just want to do their art. So there is room to take advantage. I won't. 
And I will not let anybody around an artist on my watch get taken advantage of. It's like I got this thing for some reason. I'm all right. <clears throat> but I just feel like I must be some kind of superhero because I always want to save everybody I love. You know, like Batman. But I'm not Batman. I'm that man. <laughs> and I have a that mobile. I got a that cave. And I'm also that. And that's the confidence you have to have to go to war for the people you love. You got to be that man. That man. You yeah. know, Batman, I mean, you know, they have superheroes dressed off funny and shit. Superheroes don't dress like that because then, you know, you know, we like to move cool. We don't wear a cape. We wear a bathrobe. Our uniform, our uniform is just being fresh. But at the end of the day, we always fighting for what we love. And we look cool doing it because we don't give a f And that's what art is as well. Making money off not giving a f That's art. Your mom was an entrepreneur, huh? Mm. That's, that's where you first learned? Because you've been on that, this wave your whole life, I think, right? Like you, you was always on this entrepreneur wave. So where where'd you get that from? My mom, my family, you know, I was thinking about this, like, why, why can't I, I can't even visualize losing. I just can't even see it. And I come from, you know, a family that just never let anybody pick on them, but pick on people that picked on other people. I just don't know anything but that. And I had to survive a lot of things. But also I was good at sports when I was young. You know, when you win young and all you know is winning, mm -hmm then you don't expect yourself to lose. You can't even see it. But then I think, damn, people that maybe don't win at anything when they're young and all they know is losing. I mean, I would be depressed. But I have to figure out what I love, not what everybody else loves, and just do it really good. If you love something, you're going to do it all day long until you're good at it. Hey, Gov, you're making too much noise. Come on, you want to take him? Come on, Cash. Here, look at Cash. She does the dash. Oh, you walked all over the shiny floor. That's all right. You fly. <laughs> What I was saying is, I just think because you, when you can visualize winning, you win. If you visualize losing, you lose. You know, I always tell you that I do things in dimensions. So first I have to visualize the perfect dream. In the perfect dream, because it's a dream, nothing's wrong. It's perfect. And if there's somebody around me telling me that's something that's going to distract me from my perfect dream, they got to get the away from me. I don't want to hear any doubt in this dimension. The next dimension, I put it on paper. It's a second dimension. So I have to be able to think it so I can write it. And then I make it happen, which is another dimension. And then I make it happen in the metaverse now, mm -hmm. which is another dimension. But it all starts from this clear visual of winning. So if someone's always losing, or it's probably because they're always visualizing losing. I don't understand losing. I understand fighting till I'm winning. It just means it's a longer fight. It's not like it's a game where it's like you got a certain amount of minutes and then it's over. It's over when I win. It's not over till I win. Everything else just is training for me. Yeah. But I'm, I can't see a loss. So it always keeps you in constant pursuit. Right, because if you don't stop until you win. Well, I keep winning. Yeah. So I've won fairly early at what my young dream was. So my dreams evolved. It's like a club. Once I've been in club dream and it dies, which means it's a funeral because it became a reality, which is the best funeral, is when your dream dies just because it really happened. Then I got to go think about something bigger to do. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll get bored. I'm just never complacent, and there's always something to fight for. You know what I'm saying? Because I was able to make it in a way, in a system that most can't, without having to sacrifice my nuts. And that's almost impossible. It makes me damn near a unicorn. Damn near. Like, I do it my way in no way. And as a result of that, it may take a little bit longer to get where I got to go, but it's worth it. Meaning, once I've done it, this way, mm -hmm. now I got to do it my way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did it their way, and now I'm going to do it my way. But my way is better for our culture. Do you understand what I mean? Like, I got through this that it, no, most people don't. But I know that I care about my culture. So if I'm going to win about something, my culture got to win with me. So there's so many different things to go conquer. Like I said, like, I'm, I'm an industry conqueror. So I'm, my intent when I walk into an industry is not to fit in, it's to f*** it up, to f*** obliterate it. 
because it never behooves our culture. And all of those people from our culture that are there are usually serving up our culture mm -hmm. so that they can continue to have some sort of self-win. It's self-preservation. Mm. And I don't want that. I want to make it where we're the landlords. I want to show the visual of us winning. And I want that to be what's contagious. Let me, so, and so, this needs to happen in music, movies, sports, art. Every time I walk into an industry, I'm like, yo, this ain't right for us. And then I'm angry. Not angry in a way where, like, oh, my whole life is upset. It's just something I need to deal with and put on my bucket list and get off my bucket list. Let me, let me help that out. That's why I'm in the sports. I was always on my bucket list. Like, I'm going to get out of hate here. And I'm a mm -hmm. sports fan. And I'm like, I don't like this whole game. I got to get in it. Music, I didn't even know I didn't like it till I got in it. Pause. But I didn't like it. I had to change it. Television, same. Yeah. All of it. All of it needs to be changed. Did you know that in like 1930s, the head of the Senate was the Grand Master of the Ku Klux Klan? So that means all those laws that were passed were passed by somebody that was trying to enslave us since then. But before that, think about it. So all these laws that were passed by people that had slaves need to be erased. They should be canceled. So we need to start from scratch. That's logical. You know what I'm saying? Especially in this day. Why are we still following law by people that have slaves? Those laws will never behoove us. You, 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 don't, you don't think that it's intentional that they don't teach us how to pass laws in school? You ever got taught how to lobby in school? They don't get taught anything really useful in school. You, no, you get, you get taught what's useful to them. To, be, to fit in a program, and they never teach you how to change. So we have to do it ourselves. So when we go into these marketplaces that were stimulating economies, we have to start caring about the bricks we build. We have to build rehabilitation centers, transitional ones. We have to make sure that when people come out of jail, they got a place to stay. 70% of people that get out of jail that don't have a place to stay go back to jail. 70% of people that do have a place to stay don't go back to jail. What kind of rehabilitation is putting somebody in a cage with no therapy? See, Jails are private sector mostly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a hotel to whoever owns it. You're supposed to keep them beds filled. So why would they teach you how to not come back? Logical. Yeah. Because when, when Ye said the DEA teamed up with the CCA, it was like, all right, well, that makes sense, right? They're private prisons. They need customers. They're going to keep putting laws and making different types of simulations to make sure that you keep coming back. So why don't we build our own? Yeah, so that, that, I mean, that's that, the issue. Yeah. We always know the problem, but we don't fix the problem. So that's I'm, what, I'm hate, see, like, I'm not, see, I'm part of the OSG, right? That's 150 black principles. You know Dennis McKeezy. Yes. So these are principles that care that black, we talk all day long. On Thursdays about education, on Tuesdays about entrepreneurship. The things that they don't know, they learn from me to teach everyone. The things that I don't know, they teach me. And the things the kids aren't getting, we get it for them. And we know that a system's not gonna do it, we gotta do it. So we make our own curriculums. So when we say we need a curriculum, nah, here's the curriculum. I just made a movie or a TV show with Tommy Duncan, he was a guest before, about entrepreneurship, because they never show black entrepreneurial, entrepreneurs winning unless it's sports or with some kind of entertainment. But this is a person that comes from actually building a business. His family before him had a business, they lost it, he got it back. We don't showcase those W's. So I said, let me make something about that. Showcasing something different. How important is it to control the narrative? I know it's everything. Kanye, I know that, you know, he comes from under your tree. That's real something that he's real, real focused on lately is controlling his narrative. Something that you've been focused on for like 25 years. How important is that to, to shape the narrative when it comes to media? Well, you look at it. How's the narrative been for us culturally? Masking. Sports entertainment. And anything. How's the narrative been for our culture, the narrative? We need them to win. Mm -hmm. That's the narrative that has to change. We need their validation to be validated. We complain when they don't give us awards. Them. We need to make our own award show. Why are we complaining about what somebody does in their house? That's cool. That's a good plan. But we won't be that way when we control. We'll still be fair. So 
I mean, obviously you said we got to do it together. We got to build, and that takes team building, right? So I'm talking, thinking from you, early stages, from Best Out, Rockefeller, now you talk about God, went to the Best Out. I mean, we got to start there, right? Definitely. So I, because it's important because, like, there's core principles that you learn at an early age that you still apply when you're building your team. So when you're looking to find a new avenue or a new industry to conquer, how do you go about selecting your team? Like, what are you looking for? Is it the integrity? Like, what principles did you see at in the best out and obviously Rockefeller and so many other industries? Yeah. What What are the things that you're looking for when you're building the team? Like minded. They have to be like minded. You know, we got to all want this, and it can't just be money. You know, so the best out. We like being fresh. We like being the youngest, the coolest. You know, we were thorough. We we we. And we were a crew that wasn't like, yo, let's not be tough. Let's have fun. What the f is for to be tough? Mm -hmm. Nah, we, has, we didn't even feel the need to be tough. We were never worried about it. There was no fear. And it, it was always being number one. Always being the freshest. Always, the, the, the one thing I think I loved the most about the best out was that we, we argued a lot and, and we never really got mad at each other. You, like if you, through the years, it got a little bit silly. But when we were younger, if you had like a fight because you had an argument, you were a cornball, you know? So it was constructive criticism, which like you see with y'all, I snap on y'all because y'all can take it. So, you know, we heat, we go, you know, y'all funny guys. But if I come around some people that get offended, then you don't know, pause, they be butt because they're so insecure. Confidence, mm. confidence is everything. Always, because you see, like I said, in Harlem, or at least the people in the, in the cloth I'm cut from, <coughs> Everyone's going to get a run. It's just a matter of when. But we're going to beat the concrete pause every day till we get some money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And those are just the ideals that I took with me because I'm like, damn. To be on the street, I'm risking my life, my family's life, my freedom. But here, what am I risking in this world? All I got to do is be prepared. But I'm worried about opinion. When is a drug dealer worried about opinion? They sell drugs. You wouldn't be selling drugs if you were worried about what people thought. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So I was already in a game where I didn't care what people thought. All that matters is what I thought. And once I knew it wasn't the right thing to do for me or my community, I stopped the medium. But I was young. What the f do you expect me to do? Yeah. I'm a teenager. With, with my, with, without any, my, my mom's died and, you know, my father did not live with me. So I had to take care of myself. So when you get into survival mode, especially at that young age, I mean, when I look at the younger people today and how tough they are, I'm like, do they even care about jail? Do they well, even you imagine said, you what said the f to like? me one time, I was at your house, you said something, you was like, when you're in survival mode, you can justify anything. You can justify, right. you can justify. When you're in survival mode, you justify doing whatever you gotta do to eat. And you start compromising your morals and your integrity. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why I definitely try to keep myself away from people in survival mode. But that's the ultimate test. See, money is the devil. Because the devil is whatever makes you do shit that's fucked up, right? Whatever makes you compromise your integrity and your morals and do evil. What makes people do evil stuff more than money? Unless you're lame, girls if you're lame. Huh. People, wars over money, we fight over money, everything's over money. That's the devil. That was put on this earth to test us. Will I compromise for a piece of paper that's not worth a thing? Because there's no goal that supports it. So, And everybody that was had principles with yeah. me, it was always a dollar amount that made them compromise. So some people have a certain scumbag level. Some people, because you know they never had anything, they'll scumbag you for a million dollars. But then there's people that are wait. Those are the smarter ones, and they'll catch you for twenty. But like me, you know, or, or even a hundred, that'll make you turn. There has not been a dollar amount yet that's made me say that about my principles and my morals. Yeah. And I've been tested heavy, hundreds of millions, tens of millions, millions, and I always say no. Like what's the like what's the test that? Will you sell out your friends? 
Will you fire your friends? Will you do something that disrespects your culture? You know, will you cut out the people that was with you the whole time? Those kind of things. So when they start telling you, they'll pay you to do it their way instead of doing it yours and you do it. You see what a fight was for me to make paid in full? You heard about it. Mm-hmm. I had to smack and go to court. <laughs> it was real. Harvey Weinstein was, you had to, had a disagreement with him about that. Well, it was him and his brother. What, what was really, it was his brother, but because I could only run into Harvey, I was setting it on him. Because his brother ran Dimension, he ran Merrimax, but Payne and Full was on Dimension. But Bob doesn't go outside, Harvey does. So they was getting cute, but I would catch Harvey outside, like I'd catch him in Paris, or I'd catch him in Cannes, and I would make him uncomfortable. Real uncomfortable. So they had to have meetings with me. They would be like, we're not having good, because they didn't want to do the reshoots and give me money for P&A. And that's another thing. What's that? What's pre- explain that. Uh, Printing that. So we need a reshoots um, because after you shoot a movie, you know, you need things to fill in the holes. Pause. And you just do reshoots. So they were acting funny about the reshoots. I was going to have to pay for it out of my pocket. And then they were acting funny about actually distributing and putting it out in theaters. And then about how much money they were going to put into the ads, print and ads, which was important back then. And what they told me was if it gets reviewed well and if it does a good per screen average. You know what that is? No, what's that? It's a per screen average. But so explain average, it, explain so it to if people. You have, let's say you have 100, 1,000 screens, and per screen your average is, let's say, $10,000, or it averages that it sells out. So like $6,000 per screen is decent. 10 is dope. You know what I mean? So per screening, you're making this much money, average. So we were making 6000 and we got a great, you in the uh, New York Times, uh, his name is Elvis, I forgot his name. So, you know, after that happened, I'm like, yo, you got to put it in more theaters. They wouldn't, it would just be the whole way, Paul. Even from it being written, they had somebody from another culture rewrite it, and it was crazy. They had motherfuckers selling weed in school and leather trench coats. Real <laughs> st- it was a fight the whole way. And you know what it is to have to fight about something you actually saw with your own two eyes? They try to tell you how to, how to do it when, they tried. when you saw it. Try. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they were putting up the money in hindsight, so I understand it. That's why I don't want to be in that position where I got to fight to do it right. Okay. If you got to fight to do it right, then you need to make a right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or just take a left. Get the f- out of So you, you said that money was the devil, but it's also become the tool that's helped you acquire assets. And so... I know at, at 25. Now, what's helped me acquire access is the six months. Not, not access. It's been a- my assets. Su- it's been my success. Okay. If, if money don't happen unless you have success. Right. So uh, you don't need money if you have success. You work it out. So I'm thinking in the early stages, right? You said 25, you had reached your goal of becoming a hip hop mogul. Like that was one of your goals in life. You, not, that was one of your that, dreams. One that of your was dreams. what I was going to do first. Right. And so you did that. And so at that point. Fashion. I'm, movies. Before you got there, are you acquiring assets along the way? Or are you saying when I'm young? Yeah. I'm putting my money back into the back other in the companies. Those are my assets. Doing. Okay. See, some people buy things and look at it and let it have value and shit like that. Right. In that moment, it was about investing in my dreams. My dreams was my my assets. Creating okay. things that give me residual income. Right. So yeah, my assets is on or up. I own that hundred percent. So that can make me money and my kids' money and everyone else that's in my family money for generations. So my whole thing has been to build a catalog of assets that give me residual income, as well as now getting the bricks as well. But it's easier to get the bricks. The bricks are worth more when you can put a brand on them. So you put a brand on them, and because it's a brand, and not to use this dude, but look at Trump's model. He put a name on it, it becomes more expensive. Mm -hmm. So now when I come through, I'm a brand. So when I come through to put something on bricks, pause, it's now, it's, it's all kind of literacy and health. And, and economic empowerment and sustainability, but also with the swaggy music and movies and also the swaggy fashion. It's good taste. Yeah. You know, in order to show good taste, you got to show good taste for a while. You can't have good taste because you got a stylist or somebody's telling you how to dress. You got to be able to make That's good taste. Speaking of stylist, taste, one of the most legendary situations I, I, I wrote about this on Instagram, but I don't know if I had the, the information correct. When you guys sold Rock, Rock Aware, mm. you started Rock Aware because Iceberg, right? Mm. Wouldn't, wouldn't give you We didn't money. sell it together. 
Well, so explain that because it's a lot of it's a lot of misinformation about that. So we were about to sell to Tommy Hilfiger for like you know four hundred fifty million dollars. I had got jumped in uh, Paris during Fashion Week. That's where I, you got the scar from, right? Yeah, but I caught wreck. And I got the film. I can show it to you. And Tommy is in my ear like, yo, I want to buy the company, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, I got a concussion, man. It's loud. Let's talk later. But they did make the offer. The minute, and so I would have walked away with like $40 million. <laughs> and when you, when you um, put a company to get bought, there's due diligence that comes with it. So due diligence is lawyers that just, it costs like a million dollars just to look through everything. We go through all of that. Right before we close, your man makes an announcement that he's launching another brand, S. Carter. So it devalued the brand, and they left. Tommy Hilfiger left. Yeah, because they were like, if Jay's not a part of it, we don't want it. So then, um, <laughs> you remember when Jay was wearing them dress shirts all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fighting us. Yeah, I, that was never my thing. I thought it was cool. The chain's closed era. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't me. You show a picture of me doing that, right? But. <laughs> When it was popping, my other partners were like, yo, we got to make mad dress shirts, mad dress. And I'm like, yo, this is fad. It's not going to work. It's going to be here next week. So when you order, you have to order like a year ahead of time. So we ordered all these dress shirts and then it went out of style and we ended up with dead stock and having to sell it off price. So now we had a company out, we lost, and now the, comp the company's starting to, it's devaluing the company. And I'm doing all these other things, right? So I'm investing in Kitty Burns and Ryan Kenny. I'm investing in State Property. I'm investing in Rachel Roy. I'm investing in Charlotte Ronson. You know, I, I'm trying to make us like a, 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 um, a LVMH with different brands and Rockwear be the Umbra, but they did not understand that. So we taking losses there because we starting companies. And then we took the losses with the dress shirts he had put the company up and no one, so now it's going down and I'm arguing with them and I'm like, yo, sell my interest, man. I just want to go. I'll take state property. I, I think I gave $8 million to walk with state property and a couple of others. And then also I took the debt of um, the, the money that it took to put into Rachel Roy and all these other companies, state property. And I, you know, I walked away with some cash, but I was like, yo, I'd rather have the companies. Soon as I leave, then Jay comes back and he's like, now I'm involved every day. And then they did whatever they did and sold the company without me. You understand what I'm saying? Like, then it got sold. I sold my piece first because I wanted to get So you was just, but you wasn't thing, happy with how it was going. You just wanted to get out of did, here. I tried to sell it. We tried to sell it. He said, I, I'm not going to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I'm like, yo, every time we try to sell it, why the you keep doing that. Obviously, you don't want me to get no money. So I'm like, let me get away from you. You know what I'm saying? Because we was never going to sell it if I was there. Every time we'd be about to sell it, he would do that would devalue it. And it seemed like it was intentional. So I was just like, I'm not, yo, I'll start another block, bro. I don't know why, you know what I mean? Just go ahead. And then again, as you see, the minute I got in it, it you know, got sold. And I can talk about that, but it's not my business at that point. Did, did y'all go into it together with the intent that one day we're going to grow this too? When I started the whole shit. I'm saying, did you go in the attempt? Like, I'm we're telling you, I sell. went in there. He didn't. He was. Not, I don't want to do this. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. bottom line is, Rockwood was my idea. Yeah. I approved. It was my baby. Rockefeller was my idea. Was my baby. Team Rock is my idea. Is my baby. And is my idea. I just was like, I start another baby. Y'all can have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, even Rockefeller, where's it at? That, it was. You know, have you ever seen something at its peak that's doing well just evaporate? You never, you never wonder why, but let's move on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't want to uh, get to that old. Yeah, I want, I want to talk about you investing in multiple. like because I know business. So if you ask me and you want to revisit it, and then yeah. of course I'm gonna be salty about it a little because I lost money. But yeah. let's move on. It's part yeah, of the game. I, I want to talk about investing in business because one of the things you said prior. Well, you to asked me if I had assets. Yeah, no, we can go back to that. But one of the things you said, and it's interesting because most people think when they invest in assets, they're thinking, all right, I got to invest in stock. I got to invest I don't like in real stocks. estate. I can't control it. But real you're saying I'm like investing in businesses. And one of the things you said earlier was like, you know, it's almost impossible to do all these things at the same time. So how, did, sanity. how did you manage to do it? And would you even recommend it like, to, to anybody in this space to, all right, I'm going to take on this, take on if this? If you're a superhero, do it. But if you're not, don't do it. Focus. Mm -hmm. I suggest everyone focus. I'm, I don't do everything right or I'd have more money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I sit around and talk about business all day and like I'm not in Forbes. 
I'm just living the most best life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just having the most fun and luxury, but I'm not sitting looking at no bread because I spend it in the fun. I just don't have a value for money so much. Mm. I have more of a value for like experience. I have a value for being a rock star and not being told what to do. I hate seeing people, I hate seeing people get told what to do. It gives me anxiety. Cause you ain't telling me what to do unless you, unless like, like I gotta go to court, you know? And, and that's another thing. It's like every time <coughs> someone, I catch someone trying to rob me, they sue me and start lying. Cause they know that when I get in court, I'm not gonna be like in the structure of it. But this is a crazy business when you're successful because what people will do for money, they don't have any integrity or shame. They'll lie under oath just for a dollar. And I couldn't live with myself <coughs> trying to rob somebody that doesn't deserve it. I mean, it's ups and downs, learning experiences and everything, but for somebody- nah, you become a target. Well, what I'm, what I'm going with this is that you, you've been through several litigations. You actually, you say- you've Several hundred. All right, how can, somebody, how can somebody avoid lawsuits? You can't. What have you learned from, the, from getting sued a lot and going through the lawsuit Stay process? Stay away from everybody. You see, I don't hang out with nobody. And I still get lawsuits, you know what I'm saying? Because they be so out of left. It be so crazy that people, that's what scares me, because I don't like being scared, but people be lying. Straight face lying. And what artist doesn't go through it? Or what, what person famous hasn't caught a lawsuit, whether it was real or not? You always go, it's part of the game. But you know, it is what it is. 2022. It call me that much because it's about money. So I'd be like, I, I more or less just have fun with it. But you know, court for me and you lying and I get to actually see you face to face is also, it's therapeutic for me. What's your relationship with Fox Soul? That was an interest. You called me, you told me about that also. Um, yeah, explain that play. Yeah, you know, we had a partnership. They have distribution and a sales team. So I was putting my work on there and I still am on their platform. And um, I also have my work on my platform. You know what I'm saying? But it's more of a distribution play. And, uh, um, you know, splitting the ad rev. Talk about how important knowing sales teams are, ad revenue in this business. And, you know, you talk about that a lot. Yeah, well, if, if you're doing anything or you're in business, anything that's run by the ads, the sales team, that's the boss. Cause that's the person that's paying the bills. So if you want to get in this business, and what I'm learning is the subscription doesn't work. Paid subscription doesn't work. So everybody thinks Netflix is this, that, and the third. They just drop 40%. They always got to raise a billion. They might have a lot of catalog right now, but they're spending a lot of bread. Tubi is up 40%. It's free TV. So free subscription works. But if you have people coming directly to you, then you have to have your own sales team. When you're distributing to a lot of different platforms, most of these digital platforms are subject to the digital sales team. So when you're on YouTube, it's YouTube sale team. So you gotta pay for the distribution and then you're subject to, you don't know what the cut is on the, you know what I mean? So you, to me, the goal is to get everybody to come to you, get your own sales team, and then give it to, for free. And I'm giving the game, because I want everybody to win. But you, if you don't have a sales team proper, you know, unless you have like the best integration sales team, other than that, nah. But also, things digital, you can really manipulate algorithms, it's like cheating. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I don't want to manipulate algorithms. I want to really have people come to me because I got good work. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's how's Dame Dash Studios, right? And that, that's pretty the premise. So you're going to create everything in-house. And, and create, also put it on other and, people's and put it blocks. on other people's platforms. So, Why not? As long as I own the content, right. I don't give a f be on anybody's block. You just lease it out. That's what I do. That's licensing, but also sometimes you can bust down the ad rep. I mean, that's what you're doing yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. You're right. busting down the ad rep. And with you on Fox Hall. And with me, yeah. You're just waiting for the ad rap to come. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully people are watching it. I, yeah, hopefully. If they're not watching it, we're not going to make a dollar. Well, anything that we... So that's, your, that's on you. Yeah, we, we put the If they like it, they they'll look at it. If they don't, they, you know... See, the thing is, it's, it's about how long they stay on it to get the commercial. Mm -hmm. So if they watch it for three minutes, you ain't going to make that much money. But if they watch it for 40 minutes, you make more money. So if they get bored real fast, you know, then you got to keep, uh, keep their attention. But on the stream, you know, people stay for a couple minutes and they leave. You know, when you're watching TV, you don't like the commercials. But you'll stay for the commercials if it's subject matter that you actually went to because you really like it. So I just put 30 movies from Dame Dash Studios. My man Omar is the head of acquisitions for Dame Dash Studios. And he's curated 30 filmmakers. So I just put 30 on Fox Soul, 30 on Dame Dash Studios, other filmmakers. So before it was just me. 
but now I'm empowering other filmmakers. Let me ask you this. You know Dave Gross? I think uh, you do. He's uh, Nipsey Hussle. He was Nipsey Hussle's business partner. I uh, think you met him a few times. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We, he used to work on Wall Street for like 20 years. But uh, we was talking and he was saying like, there's not a lot of places where you can invest money right now for like hedge fund and stuff like that. Like stocks is not doing well, crypto's not doing well. And he was like, yo, you in war. I wouldn't but believe. listen, but listen, he was like, you'd be surprised how many people have been calling me about investing in artists' catalogs. Like that's like the new oh, thing. that's the wave. Lil Wayne sold his catalog, I think for like 100 million. Yeah, but um, I wish he wouldn't have. How you feel about this? Because a lot of artists have been selling their catalog. That's like the John Legend. Because the reason why I don't like it to sell your catalog now is because it was based on an evaluation, based on a distribution before NFTs. So if it, you can sell your catalog at an NFT for 10 times, then that means your catalog is worth 10 times more. So can you imagine if Lil Wayne would have sold Nicki Minaj's first song as an NFT? He probably would have made 20 million right there. So you're not opposed to selling the catalog, just want to get in the Mac. Because we was it depends on much money. It depends on the person. We I'm was not going to, you know, like if you're making a billion, it depends. I, for me, I don't have enough catalog right now in this moment to just sell. So if somebody offered me 100 million for my catalog, it, it depends if I'm getting 10 million a, a month or, or a year, I might say nah, because that's all it is. It's 10 times, you know, 10 million a year. That's, that's the multiple. You, get mul you know multiples, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, that means so basically, if you get a hundred million, then yeah. what's that mean? That means it was uh, if at, a, at, a, at a multiple of ten, that it was making ten million a year. Somebody, I'm gonna spend a hundred million dollars on right now, unless I got something to buy. Right. So I might sell it if I want to buy something else, but if not, nah. You so know like, what I mean? But only if I need it. But you but, said you said in the in the the world of NFTs now, because obviously. You well, can that's make, what I'm saying. The multiple should be higher now. And you can make residuals every time. Yeah. It's sold. Okay. So you could still get it. So I was like, nah, I wouldn't do that because now that's all they're gonna do is sell on the, on the NFT world. You got it's, it's just a new world. So I would I would have waited until after this thing. But it's also important for the artists to look at themselves like how startup companies and like in VC world. Like, let me ask you a question: How many Little Wings are there? One. One. There's not many people that got a hundred million dollars hip hop of catalog. Nah, but you might have a ten million dollar catalog, a five million dollar catalog. Not many people do. All right. Some do. Yeah. I said some. I said not many. Yeah, that, I mean, catalog is one of the things you stressed to us early on, like when we first met. It was like create a catalog, create a catalog, because in, unless you can sit down and make money without actually having to be in a place, that's residual income. That's the residual. Can you just elaborate on that and stress what the importance? Residual income is if while you're by the pool, someone's playing your record or playing your movie, and you don't have to put any money into promoting it, you just get a check. So that's why, you know, making money or having sell a lot of records up front, it just covers your cost. But if it doesn't continue to sell, it's about when it sells and you don't have to put up any money to sell it. That's straight money. That's profit. So 10 years later, you get checks and you haven't even promoted it, put up any money. That's residual income. So it's about having enough of that so you can either always get a loan against it or sell it if you have to or cash flow all the time. So that's the reason why I'm developing a catalog of movies that I own. For residual income. That way, my kids really can be lazy. Talk about the music. I know you got shout out to Nicolette. Nicky Licky. <laughs> you still, you still. You Gets still. everybody sticky. <laughs> Talk about that. Talk about the music. Well, Nicolette, and I have this model. If you help me build my dreams, then I have to help you build yours. But you really got to help me. I hate this thing where people come to me like, make my dream come true. I'm like, I'm supposed to stop what I'm doing to make your dreams come true, and then I gotta bust it down half. So I'm only working on making people's dreams come true that have helped me. She's been working with me and going through a lot with me for the last five, four years, four or five years. So I'm like, oh, you wanna be an artist? So I've actually had her in Blue Rock boot camp, performing live, making records. She got 300 records. And then finally, she caught a record. And we put it out because I've been putting records out. I mean, I have a, I just, Blue Rock, I have a, a division that distributes music. It's like I got my own Who kit. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been distributing. I gave, uh, I did a deal with Principal Akbar, West Side High. That's Newark. New New Newark, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's been putting out music. And Hassan and, uh, you know, Nicolette's record is popping. And now it's on all these playlists. And, you know, DJs, they're taking it serious. And she's ready. So she helped me build my dream. I'm, I'm loving to see her dreams come true, but she really rolled out with me. You know what I'm saying? So she deserves it. But she's really an artist. She plays the, every instrument. She sings. She raps. Mm -hmm. You know? She'll pass the blicky if I need it. She's dad to do that at times. You know what I'm saying? Like, important. she's rolled out. Very, very, very important. important. Very, very important. important.
I mean, you know, yeah. you wouldn't think like a white girl would do all that. You never know. But she she got more rhythm. Like when black girls come to the crib, and they start rapping. Unless you like dead nice, she usually burns them because she got she could do so many things. Little known fact. You did a country music record. Why are you acting like I ain't make a country music? Nah, you, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, everything it's, I do is normal. Got, I, mean, I, 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 I made a country music record and everyone's music like, too. oh, that's just Dame. I got a cowboy hat on and all that. I'm singing. You, you, you got a ranch in Wyoming. Yeah. You still got it? Why would I not still have it? I'm just curious if you still yes, have it or not. <laughs> that's it? I know, I know, yeah. If so. I didn't, I probably wouldn't want to say it now, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to sell it. No, I, still nah, I mean, because yeah, he's his ranch. So what that mean? What they got to do with me? What type of time you want, bro? Well, you said something to me before. Um, you said you're not a boss until you have to fire somebody. Yeah, until you have the power to fire somebody. Ex explain that. You can't fire nobody unless I'm it's just your saying because it's like you. That's not something that most people look at. Like that's something that's it's the normal. They want to do as a as a. As I don't want to, but you have to. If you, you you paying somebody, and they not doing what they need to do to make your money, you still got to pay them. So you got to get them out of there. It's a professional team, mm. and also sometimes you know I'm a lot. You know what I mean? Like I'm very different than most people. So. Would have never, know, I would have never guessed that. Yeah, you know? Surprising. So I could be a picture, if you're not my cup of tea, if I'm not yours, I catch a lot of lawsuits. But I'm like, yo, you know what this is, you know who you're dealing with, and if this is what you're built for, then we can rock out. If it's not, you're going to go home crying. Yeah. And then talk about suing me. You know what I mean? So you got to be built for, for war. You are... Independent, being independent is war. You, you talked about investing in businesses. You talked about you know, how you want your kids to eventually flourish the, from, from the things you've done. Reap the benefits. Reap the benefits of it. So what do you ultimately want Dame Dash's legacy to be? A conqueror. You know, like I told you, I'm Batman, a superhero. Like, you know, Alexander the Great, but the black version, you win. You know, you don't get killed when you're young. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, you know, Hannibal or uh, Julius Caesar. Like, I want to be held in, like, Malcolm X, but, like, with money. Mm -hmm. But, again, at the end of the day, I don't want to be having to sacrifice me and not be able to smell my own flowers from, you know what I mean? Like, the sacrifice is I'm going to get out there and do the rough stuff. Right. My children can't even imagine to go through and have had to go through that, and I, that's what I want. And for them to understand, like, while I'm doing the rough stuff, to have enough time to actually raise them is important. Yeah. So that's why I remember when I came in, I'm like, yo, I just left my son. You know right. what I mean? Like I'm supposed to be, I, I, I cherish every second because they're not babies very long. I love that, I love that feeling of, of, I love babies. You know what I'm saying? And they, they grow up. So, and I want my kid to be able to observe me, not observe somebody else because that's really how they learn in that moment. Yeah, you know? So. Y'all got kids? Yeah, two. Mm. Yeah, our son. You too? Our son. You with the moms? No. Nah. You with the moms? Yeah. Yeah, it's dope. Appreciate right. it. But it is dope, right? Yeah. To, it, it sucks when you're not with the moms. I've been through both. It's way better when you're with the moms. Way better. Yeah. Because, cause like, my son loves both of us, me, Dusko loves me, and all my kids do. They love me and their parents and their mother equally. So for, her to have to, for my kid to have to be away from their mom to see me means they're going to always feel a little pain. It's always a little pain there when you're not doing it together. You know, but it, it happens. But it took me to 50 to get it right. Can y'all believe I'm 50? I'm, I'm about to be 51. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so obviously, your, your kids are watching you go through some of the trials and tribulations. No, they're um, not. They lived. They, they, they lived. I, that's what I'm saying. What you read, don't be trial and tribulations. They don't feel none of it. They don't feel anything. So Not a damn thing. But you Nothing. Got, you know when they say I'm broke and all that shit? Go to court, I'm the richest. That's the only place I got money is in court. <laughs> Think about it, right? They be locking me up. I got to give a million. Think about it. If, if my child supports a million dollars in a year, what the fuck do you think is going on? My kids, my child support is a million dollars. I'm independent. And if I don't have it, they put me in jail. Mm -hmm. So really what happens is like, yo, I ain't got it right now. They like warrant. And then I'll come back when I get it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going for a damn with modification. My kids don't ever feel it. And I always make sure their mothers can do it without me, but they just be mad at me. And they'd be like, nah, you supposed to pay for it, so you better. So I'm like, all right, I'll pay for it. I have no problem ever. 
So all my kids have nannies. They've all gone through college, you know, going through college, private schools. One percenters, all of them. Not one of them has had to feel any pain. Yeah, so that was my thing. It's like, are you teaching them as you're going through these things yourself? I'm not and going through nothing. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I'm trying to tell I'm you. not saying not that you're going. Through, I'm like, the, this the, is nothing. You the, know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you think for it you, is for anybody. But, but you've been built to face these things, right? Like, face you're, what? You said you're a unicorn. So the things that you have actually. It's just because I do some. I'm just saying. Right. A lot of times people think make things way more iller than they are. Like to me, going to get my license and having and um, what's that? Um, where you go to get your license? DMV. For like six hours, I'd rather go to court. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it doesn't bother me. It's mm. part of the game. Like I'd rather go to court than go to work. I'd rather go to court than have to go to like sit in a classroom all day. Court's more exciting. It's an experiment. Remember that time I got locked? Ask them. I was laughing. I'm like, yo, all, all y'all out here for me? I was just pretending I was Pablo Escobar for a little while. <laughs> See, I was dressed up, made him cut me to the front, threw a party after it. It's all an experience to me. That might have been an illest move with a dick. Oh, man. <laughs> Can we get a breakdown of, of portfolio, like what you got going on? You know, from the music side to the football oh, side, like what's in your portfolio right now? So right now it's the football teams. It's Blue Rock, Nicolette. Uh, we also have another artist coming out, um, Edgar, uh, The Prince of Detroit. I gotta finish directing that. I'm two episodes in. I gotta direct four more hour episodes. You know, Fox Soul and the partnership there. So we have 30 new movies on Fox Soul. Poppington. So you see all of this fresh, it's available, you know, cut and sew. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, OSG, the commission, and that's, you know, again, the 150 principals, uh, Senator Eddie Milton, Congressman R.J. Carson, Bishop Purnell, Dr. Purnell, Taj and uh, Melanie, and do it all. So there's therapy and there's, there's everything, and we're fighting all day on that. Um, and then there's Dame Dash Studios, uh, Rocky's book. We put out a children's book, Dusko Goes to Space, also a coloring book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh yeah, and the NFT Museum, the Dash NFT Gallery, stay tuned for the metaverse and the things we're doing there. It's going to be very interesting. I'm looking at acquiring, a, I'm going to speak on that. So yeah, that's what's about that. And, uh, any real estate in the portfolio? Yeah, you want people to know where I live? No, I'm saying if there is any. Yes. Okay. We don't want to tell them where you live. You know, the IRS is looking, right? Yeah, of course. Our company acquires, I mean, you just said they got ranches. Just, you know, just acquired something in Florida. Going to do something in, uh, when it's acquired, I'll speak on it. But yeah, the whole, yeah. So, yeah, stuff is acquired and we'll be acquiring, yes. Always. You got some of your real estate? Oh yeah, any, any, <laughs> what you got in your real estate portfolio? Um, a few properties. What? In Connecticut, a few in uh, Connecticut, uh, Cleveland, Cle Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. In yeah. Cle Cle Cleveland? Used to get in Ohio. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. actually, we got Gary. Gary, Gary and Gary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, got to close on it though. But yeah, everything is real estate, but it's about doing cool. Uh, yeah. And I'm also opening up a casino, but we'll speak on that later. One last question. Let's end with the multiverse, metaverse. Let's end, let's end in the future. I know you, you, I'm impressed because a lot of people from your era scared of the future, but you embrace it. You heavily into the metaverse. Talk about that. Just talk about how you feel about the metaverse. Everybody has different opinions on it. What's your, what's your, what's your thoughts on it and what's your plans for it in the business side? Well, number one, I'm a time traveler. <laughs> we all know this. So I always go to the future. I go to the past. I move around. So I just saw in the future that the metaverse and NFTs, just because of the tracking part of it and just the way things are going, like, you know how in the Oculus, it's this big Oculus. Imagine the first portable phone. Remember how big it was? Mm -hmm. Pause. And it was like, you know, and then they got smaller. That's the Oculus. It's going to turn into something way slicker and leaner. And what I'm seeing is, you know, real estate in the metaverse is selling for, if not more, just as much as real Real estate and all the things that I want to do it was almost like I created the metaverse in my brain because I want to do all these creative, trippy, cool things. And also, I don't like going outside so much. So the thing I like about the metaverse is it almost becomes pandemic proof.
because you don't have to go outside to be there, you know? And also, you know, all these things that I, it's just the ability to do new, I like, you know, that's why I said, I can't believe I'm 50. I don't, I'm waiting to get tired. I thought by now I'd be like, oh, it's relaxed. It's like 25. I just think I'm having too much fun. I'm having way more fun than y'all. Look. Think so? Yeah, look, y'all. I'm not soon. sure. I'm not sure. Let's have a fun off. Pause. Uh, go come to one of my shoots. <laughs> we're gonna come to, we're gonna see. Watch this. Nah, we're all having fun. It depends on what you consider fun. Right. But I just think I'm having so much fun that it just keeps me, gives me a lot of energy, you know. But you guys are having fun because your dreams are being realized. You're running around the world. Like it's like y'all going places I've been, and I'm like, yeah, it's like this, that, and the third, and it's dope. And I like that. You know what I'm saying? Are you having fun? Absolutely. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I wear socks, usually don't have fun like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It doesn't look like fun. It's always something. It's always something. It's always something. something. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I want to say just this last piece is that over the last few years, I feel like you've made Yo, yourself. You oh, you turned the music on. Thank you. It's not playing MGMT. I was like, <laughs> sorry, man. Over the last few years, I've noticed. You know, yeah, I'm just gonna go by that. That my I have like headphones and the phone is in my. In well, my you talk about that. Like, <laughs> I was. You just ignoring it. Y'all be hating. You know what I'm saying? Y'all never try to. Wait, wait, wait. You ain't the first right now. You own no shades. Ray Ban. You own no shades. We just didn't get a check from Ray Ban. So it's Who tough. Who cares? It's still flash. For a moment, flash. Flash. Talk, talk about it. You got that. No, it's just okay, back to the future. You're right. Glasses. I respect that. But what would happen if you said something about Ray Ban and because you said something, they call you and then you are in business? All right, with. so let's do it. Yeah, but you got I'm Ray Ban. I'm Dame Dash. You got but the Marty what I'm McFly. Is, you got the Marty McFly glasses. What, what I'm, yeah, what I'm saying is, like, I'm the phone is in my glasses. Mm -hmm. I could take pictures and video, and it's headphones. So what that tells me is, in the in the future, there's not going to be no more phones. Where'd you get those from? From Ray. Oh. Um, um, Chameleon there sent them to me. Chameleon there? Uh, yeah. Because I called them and we, you know, because, you know, I, I don't know if everyone really knows how, like, on the tech world side, he's our, he's our Steve Jobs, you know? And you should talk to him because he's very generous with information. So him and I talk a lot. And I was telling him my ideas and he was, and I was like, yo, did you hear about this? And he was like, oh, they just sent them to me because the tech world always sends him shit. So he was like, I ain't gonna open them, I'll send them to you. And he sent them to me and I've been and the reason why is because I want to be there before everyone else. So if this is going to be the new apparatus and this is how people are going to be doing it, I'm going to start investing in it. He was the first. Why, who wants to hustle on a crowded block? So yeah, when it is popping or everybody starts doing it, I'm going to be like, you remember I was doing it here, blah, blah, blah. First on that too. And I'm 50. You know what I mean? So I take pride in being first, doing things futuristic and learning it so I could be some part of an entrepreneur. You know, why you keep, oh, it's when I touch it, pause. I'm touching it? Yeah. What part I touch? Just touch that and it plays? Oh, you just touch this and the music plays. <laughs> oh, this is dope. So I could be talking, boom, and it's theme music. I'm doing that. From now on, I'm gonna just be boop, bum, 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 bum. The, the That Man theme music, before you talked about the shades. I was gonna say over the la last few years, um, I've noticed you've made yourself more available to the younger generation, to us, Specifically, well, there's an IG. Yeah, IG right. So more IG. people. Yeah, you would yeah. IG live and people. You've no, made yourself. I, honestly, I, like you, me, 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 yeah, and, yeah. me and hip hop uh, motivator Kenyatta, mm -hmm. we've been doing this for a while. So me and him before podcasts, and before it was even monetized, I would just when he give me a haircut, tape, and I would just you know drop jewels and put it out and put it out. You, know, you remember those, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that became Culture Vultures, the book. Culture, that's what I'm saying. So I've always tried to talk to people that yeah. when I leave an industry, I still feel sorry for everyone that's in it. So that's the reason why I, I do, but well, you, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was going to say, are you taking a conscious effort to say, you know what, let me mentor the people in those industries that I'm now leaving to give them the advice and hopefully guide them from the mistakes that I've made or some of the, the actual... I always wanted to do that, but I never had the access. Okay. So now that I have like the OSG and the senators and, you know, like when I go to New York, I'm going to court, but I'm also going to foster homes. I'm going to schools. You know, I'm going to be able to do something. Yeah. But I want to do something. It's not really because I want the credit for it or whatever. I really want to see us win. I don't want to just be talking about it. I want to be about it. I want to lead by example. I want to make that the coolest for us to selflessly help our culture when we're up and not for photo op. Just because you really care. 
It's all in our kids. It's all in our future. It's all about preparing them not to have to deal with what we dealt with. Mm. It's a new world out there. So education, it should definitely be space travel. How come nobody's teaching space travel? Why are they not teaching coding? Like, I don't get it. Fundamentals like farming. It seems intentional. Voting. Mm -hmm. How come they have you play basketball but don't teach you how to be a basketball owner? When you were in school, they teach you how to be an entrepreneur, how to pay taxes. They don't teach you how to be rich because you won't know how, because they don't think you ever will. Yo, it's hard being rich, having money and keeping that. That's the business within itself. It's a fact. And, and, and when you get there, the government has no, like, yo, it's the first time. How the I'm supposed to know you got to pay this much? Well, you should ask somebody. That's a fact. You're still accountable. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Nigga, I paid Barry Klarberg, my accountant, 250000 a year. I still owe $12 million in taxes. And he didn't get in trouble. I paid not to be in that game. And now I'm still in the game. Lawyers, accountants, none of them are accountable. You pay them and they're out. It's just like shooting, right? These guys are all shooting. All of them, right? When they're done, the editor is going to be in the room. He's not here. It ain't going to matter. The editor's not happy. Nothing matters. And they're not here. So you know how many times I've shot, didn't get my coverage, and then I'm sitting in the editing room like tight? Because I can't fire nobody. They already shot. They're not here for me to yell at. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Any, yeah. any mentors that you've had in your journey? So for farming, Farrakhan. So you know, he heard I was talking about farming. He sent for me and Rocky. I sent for me. I brought Rocky. I went. Taught me everything about farming. In Michigan? His farm in Michigan? Chicago, yeah. Chicago? Yeah. You know, I have access to people. So mentor. Uh, Taj Mahal, the blues singer. You don't know him? No. You don't know Taj Mahal? No. It's a damn shame. He's like the Dame Dash of blues. You should Google him. But yeah, he's a person that I think people should know about from our culture because he's, and he's living. He's a, one of the smartest people, that person that I know. All his kids have PhDs, but he's out there playing the blues in a way that most people didn't and still does. But you should Google him. If you like a real music connoisseur, it'd be like, he's a legend. So Taj Mahal, when, when we lost the baby, you know, he got us a crib or found a crib for us, went to Hawaii, and, you know, just sang the blues, man, you know, on the beach. In general, the, the best advice actually came from, from, from people that I don't even like so much. Um, there was never fight for somebody more if they're not fighting for themselves. Don't fight for nobody that's not fighting for you or that's not fighting. No, don't fight harder for somebody than they're fighting for themselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We were uh, performing at the Palladium with Biggie Smalls. And uh, you know, I ain't gonna say no names, but Biggie's uh, security had swung on one of my mans. So I performed and I stopped and I swung on the security, boop. And then my man ran up at the time and was like, yo, he wasn't fighting him. Why are you swinging on him? And he wasn't, Don't, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I always, I always remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. You know what I mean? But what's even crazier is that I was actually could say I performed on the stage with Biggie Small. Yeah. And the fight was it was cool, right? Make we, dash was like, we was all fighting. Say my name, make him dash and like then, Dean. Yeah. Stay and then Detroit like Jay player. stopped and was like, I like he freestyled it into the thing and then went back to rap and it was real cool. But you know, those days were interesting. It was a lot of fun compared to what I see these days, but it's probably because I'm old and I don't want to be hating. But, you know, I got to sit at the table with Biggie in those glory days with Wu-Tang and Nas. And, you know, we got to actually battle LL and Big L. And, you know, it's crazy. All these people I grew up with, and now they're legends. It's out. Like, think about what you're, when you're 50, what you think that's going to look like and what you think you're going to reflect on. You know, you're going to actually be like, Damn, I kick, I kick it with Dane Dash. It's going to be a stat. Yeah. And think of the it. other stats. You know, celebrating every win is important. I celebrate every win. Uh, there's no losses. Those are learning experiences. But I always celebrate the Ws. Always celebrate every W. Don't let nothing go without being celebrated. I appreciate that. Yeah, you man. have it. My yeah. brother, always a pleasure, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, Any, you anytime. Always, you always doing your thing. You know, you only invite me when it's in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, let Rick Ross. We got it. <laughs> oh, <it's not> <laughs>
Now, good looking. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all owe me an interview. Oh, yeah, that's easy. Too easy. Stay up for round two. Play toilet like she wanna play too. See like they talking K2. If not me, it's with the crew. Say she want a different vibe this week. Pretty girls bust that ass from the sneaks. Be aware she getting undercover free. In the spot, she ain't got no panties. Damn. Do your dance. Do your dance. Get your man. Do your dance. Do your dance.